Hello and welcome to Respect the Crit. I'm your host, Ian Duncan. My pronouns are he, him, she, her, whatever you want. It's all good. And I am going to be playing Shiny's Two Scoops Charizard, the greatest wizard in all the land, in our D&D one-shot adventure. And here to play with me, please welcome Alex Herrera. Hello, I'm Alex Herrera. He, him. I play Incognito, the half-elf paladin slash mask vigilante slash, I believe, still 12-year-old child because (laughs) I'm not cursed. I got blessed by the tarot deck. <laughs> would you want to go back to 12 years old, Alex? What, what what would that experience be like for you, IRL? Only if I got to like, if I was like, hey, you get to grow up again. Because that was the fun part, you know? Like, <laughs> that, that was the yeah, fun part? Growing, growing up, yeah, <laughs> growing so up is fun. It's cool. I had a good time, you know? But yeah, if I could, if it was guaranteed like, hey, you're going back to 12, but you get to come back, like, you got to do it again. Hell yeah, I would just invest. I would just become like a little fucking shithead, <laughs> little Wall Street bets before Wall Street bets existed. <laughs> like the actual guy on the little icon, that would be me, a little curly haired version of him. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Oh, you. So you're thinking all of time goes back? No, no, no. This is just mm. you goes. Oh, just back. me. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. Why not? Because I'd be, I'd be able to be. I'd, people be like, oh my god, look at this twelve year old with this huge IQ, and I would be lying because it's like I have the mind of a thirty five, <laughs> of a semi intelligent thirty five year old, <laughs> with some experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also sharing her experience with us, please welcome Susan Spinader. Hi, I'm Susan. I go by she/her, but like Ian, meh. <laughs> meh. Call me whatever you want. Um, but today you should be calling me Pterodactyl, the very cool dragonborn bard. Ooh, that's right. Yeah. Because yeah. she's Love a white it. dragonborn, so frosty. So cool. Those ba- bagpipes glistening with <laughs> <Yes>. ice crystals. <laughs> Echoing throughout the cavern, you hear a dirge being played <laughs> on the bagpipe. Yeah. As the lactites you? fall. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Susan? What what's your going back to twelve? Is that something you're you're into or not? No, especially like if it just happened right now and I'm twelve, my relationship with John would get very weird. I didn't think about that part. I didn't think about that part. Yeah, that was. 12-year-old Ian was just entering his goth era, Ooh, so, same. like, that might be, you know, worth going back to, you know, a little uh, bit. That was, uh, those were good times. Fishnet stockings uh, yeah. on, on the legs and on the arms. Oh, and skirts uh, yeah. over pants, and mm-hmm. that's yep, what absolutely. I did. And then, Lots like, heavy eyeliner, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just eyeliner for me. I was not doing any of that stuff. There's no way. Even if I did have a goth face, my parents have been like, nah. Oh, like, yeah. Luck. No, no, no. We, it, 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 our school h- hated it. My parents hated it. But uh, be gay, do crimes. You know, that's what I say. <laughs> 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 Being criminal uh, right along with all of us and running this this uh, this game that we are playing. Please welcome our illustrious dungeon master jamie lee bonez hello i am jamie she her but prefer you call me dungeon master (laughs) my pronouns are dm DM. (laughs) um no uh yeah i would never want to go back to being 12 that's so fast look i'm the only one who wants to do it because it feels like I would be Benjamin Button, but like in mm. a much better way. I'm oh, not being no. a man Are, man are we going to have another yeah. Benjamin <laughs> no, Dutton no, 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 discussion? No, no, no. Is this the podcast within the podcast? <laughs> Is this going to be our <laughs> intro Secretly. again? Explain Benjamin, Benjamin Button, Button to Susan again? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let me tell you how great this movie was. <laughs> <laughs> We do a watch through on the Discord. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, age is not something we have to fight uh, anymore, or yet at least in this. I, I believe we're coming up on um, a chasm, almost a rift in the very earth itself uh, that we must cross in order for us to proceed any further beyond the point that anyone has ever ventured within the mountains of Grey Hill. So, Jamie. Please, take us away.
we saw our adventurers. It was the year 69 on the Isle of Geos. Our fellowship, the Kings of 69, were in the belly of the mountain. After an encounter with some glowing orbs, fungi and ghostly aspirations taking the form of past loved ones, Fulman was lost to a spirit of what appeared to be his daughter. Shinies claimed the Jade Blade Ivasaur and was lulled by its dulcet tunes, catching their bearings. The group continues forth, looking for answers, solutions to the town's recent curse, the blight over its citizens. And now they are at a crossroads. Two bridges both torn down and nowhere else to turn to. And coming up on these bridges, you are going to see Lorelei go right up to the edge, peeking over. Holy shit, that's fucking far. <laughs> is she looking down or is she looking out? Down. Oh, oh not <laughs> She's a good idea. She's looking down. No. Hey, don't worry. I have just a spell. I wonder, oh, what could it be, shinies? <laughs> <laughs> well. Surprise, it's Earth Tremor. She falls off. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, far, how far is it, Lorelai? Oh, yeah, tell Woo! us. Just listen for the thud. Uh, I just drop a dancing light down there. Um, I do cast some dancing lights so that we can see uh, mm -hmm. naturally. Wonderful. But um, if I remember from last time, there was a there was like a wooden bridge, right? And then there was a yes. rope bridge. No, there is a wooden rope bridge and a stone oh. bridge. Thank oh, you. Okay, so bridge, there's a yeah. stone bridge that's like busted, and then mm -hmm. the wooden rope bridge has been cut. Has been cut, yeah. And how far across is it? For here, let's look at the map. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 feet. Ooh, okay. okay. Tara's going to uh, approach like the cut rope bridge and look across and just be like, hmm. And then like snap her fingers and this like spectral hand's gonna appear and it's going to zip across and grab the rope and bring it back to her. Oh. Mm. Well, it cool. can't bring it back to you because it's cut in half, so it's only going to go halfway. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, could br it would be able to do that. Aw, uh, dang it. So she's gonna do that and be like, oh. Hmm. Wait, Tara, that's perfect. Give me like 10 minutes. And Shinies is going to sit down and he's going to start casting a ritual. He's going to like make a little circle, like a, a salt circle around him and just sort of be like humming like from his throat, like sort of throat singing, uh, just softly chanting. And as he does so, like in about 10 minutes time, a spectral plate or disc is going to uh, to form, and it's just going to bob and float, and he's gonna get he's gonna get on it, and like float out towards the middle of the bridge, where those ropes are are being held. That is freaking cool. Yeah, that is. But canonically, like a minute later, the hand's gonna disappear, and then she's just gonna like keep <laughs> casting it. It's a cantrip, just, so <laughs> it just drops down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just for ten minutes straight. <laughs> you just hear clunk against the side of the cavern. <laughs> uh, okay, just bring it up here. <laughs> one more time. One more again. And then I'm gonna take the rope from Tara's spectral hand. Okay. And I'm going to hold the two together and I'm going to cast Mending, which oh. is a cantrip. Ooh. And the rope fibers are going to be infused with magical energy and then just start to like grow together and bind together as if this rope had never been cut before. Mm. Oh, I love that. Okay. So we've got 
uh, half of a rope. I assume you'll do the same thing to the other side if oh, you said yes. it was a cantrip. So you've got pretty much a rope bridge, man-made rope bridge, all put together. And you're still on your disc, but are you going to hop onto the bridge? you going to float back, go to the other side? Well, we should test this bridge first, I think. Make sure that it's safe. <laughs> Incognito looks at Lorelai. I think it's important that, uh, you know, you check it out. We're very big. You're very small. Chances are you won't break it. Plus, you'll get across first. I don't know that Lorelai is going to want to go across first. <laughs> uh, she's going to look towards you. Are you fucking kidding me? I ain't going across that first. You go. Uh, he realizes I am a 12-year-old child. <laughs> but I'm wearing, uh, I think I'm wearing, what the hell am I wearing? Chain mail. I'm pretty high. I'm, I'm a big boy. I'm wearing a lot of heavy Oh, you're stuff. heavy. Yeah, I'm at heavy least. Stuff. You got a little yeah, armor. Yeah. I'll look at her. Or I'll incognito look at her and say, mm, how about we play? Rock, paper, scissors. We're logically the two best equipped to go across. She's going to look over at her brother, Luvon, who did suffer an injury but was healed. I mean, he's the same size as me. You fucking go. He's hurt. As this is going on, I, Tara is just going to step onto the bridge. Oh, my God. <laughs> Tara, wait! <laughs> Creed. Yep. Now it is old. It is an old bridge, but the cut you will have noticed, shiny, seems relatively like a fresh cut. Um, Yo, yeah, okay, a, a fresher, deliberate cut. Uh, but the bridge itself, you know, has been there a while. Uh, because it is freshly mended, though, I'm gonna say that um, you guys are gonna cross uh, physically totally fine. But I will, as you're crossing, ask you to roll a wisdom save for me. Mm. Oh, shit. Ooh. That's my good stat. Ooh, that's a 17. Yeah, baby. it is. That was a six. Oh, 1924. <laughs> Your disc lasts an hour, right? Let me see. Or is I it believe like a so. Floating disc lasts one hour. Yes, you're right. Okay, shit. so you can just float across. You'll be, you'll be totally fine. I'm going to float by uh, uh, Terra in case anything did happen. I just... Float alongside her just to make sure. Sure. You know, if she fell, I could grab her in time. Sure. When I was over there mending the rope, it looks like it had been cut pretty recently. Maybe they're the ones that uh, uh, passed Luvon and Lorelei and uh, Fulman mm. uh, from before, and they didn't want anyone else getting the reward. Maybe that's why they cut the bridge. It, it that is a possibility, but. Wouldn't that limit their options of getting out of here? Oh, good point. Maybe they've got magic like you and me. Maybe there's a, a way that they can move through here. What was that, uh, what was that, that lady's name we met in the temple, her sister? Do you think it was her? It could be. Roselia was her name, I believe. <gasps> Roselia Asrani, that's right. It was, it was pretty to say, but... Uh, Hard to say with my <laughs> snoot. <laughs> yes, that I completely understand. Oh, oh, oh. And then she's going to stumble. Okay, uh, maybe I should pay attention to where I'm stepping. I got you. I got you. If you fall, I'll catch you. Well, you guys are going to cross fine. Um, you are going to, as you're going, because this is such a deep crevasse, it goes all the way down. almost seems like all the way to the top, though you can't actually see the top of the cavern. Going across, you're going to hear this gush of wind about midway through your walk across this rope bridge. And it is gonna sway back and forth. But in that wind, Tara, you are going to hear a whisper, almost calling from beneath you, around you, as the wind pushes whatever tendrils a dragonborn would have for hair across your face. Uh, it's almost as if the breath is on your neck. Who is that that you hear that would be so intimate to get that close to say, Tara? It would be Tara's, probably Tara's mother, Ariel. It's her mother whispering and almost like, it's almost like a comforting hug to Tara. But you don't sense any malice or anything. It's not like 
something is like trying to scare you. It's almost like something's inviting you to come over here for a minute, Tara. It's okay in the dark. Um, but you are going to make it across the bridge just fine. Are you okay, Tara? You you kind of zoned out back there, right right in the middle of the bridge. I thought I heard No, 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 no. It couldn't be possible. Nothing, nothing. I am I'm fine. I everything is fine. But she's still looking towards the chasm or uh, the chasm. It brought back memories of someone I haven't thought about in a while. Oh? Uh if you don't mind me asking, who? My mother. But that couldn't be possible. She she passed many, many years ago. I I mean, I saw my brother. He was he's not been with us for a long time. Uh, yeah, Incog, he looks up because he has to look up. If this place is pulling our thoughts, our deepest memories, and using our loved ones against us, we should be very careful. Who knows what else this place could pull from one's mind to her heart. And he kind of does like a little, like a smolder as he looks around. Like, uh, what's his name from the Jumanji The Rock? Just a random smolder for no reason. But a 12 year old, so it's like, yeah, oh, yeah, but a 12 year old. Yeah, yeah. Lou Vaughn is going to just mention, you know, I heard that's, that's one of the first symptoms of the curses you start hearing and seeing stuff. They're inside our minds, inside our brains, trying to use the things that hurt us emotionally to weaken us and make us vulnerable. I don't have a spell for to defend against that. And it feels so real. I, I know, having spoken to you two, that you both experienced some, something similar, but it truly felt like my mother was here. If there's something in our minds, there's only one way to fix this, right? We have to, we're gonna have to operate on our brains, get it out of there. Ooh, or perhaps we find the source of this curse? He looks at his morning star. I mean, that seems like it'd be simpler to just, and he like taps on, <laughs> taps on his own head. <laughs> oh, 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 no, 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 don't do that. Um, let's, let's just go forth and find the source. I feel like that we will reconsider your option should we need to. What if we put out there what it is that makes us vulnerable and that way it can't be used to hurt us? If we say it out loud, if we give it form, then we can turn our pain into, into armor. I do that all the time. That's literally... What I do when I patrol the streets. Unless you're talking about, like, do you mean tell our secrets to each other? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Oh, no, absolutely not. No, never, never in a million years. I don't, I can't. And he kind of puts his cape in front of, his hat cape <laughs> in front of himself. It's like, um, emotional surgery. Ugh. Feelings and stuff. Yeah. I uh, I'll do it if Ma if Tara says that's okay. <laughs> uh, yes, I I believe at the very least it would benefit us just to know should we say we're talking about these people. Like we we as a group will be able to recognize when it's happening to one of us. Hmm. I don't want to go first. Oh, I'll go first. I don't mind. When I was very young, I, uh, I had a brother, older brother. His name was Squirtle, Dynamax Squirtle. We called him Three Scoops. <laughs> Dynamax <laughs> Three Scoops Squirtle. And he was an incredible wizard. He knew everything. He, he was unmatched in, in his power and, and his learning, and he helped to keep our village safe and I really looked up to him I still do but one day there was uh, an attack really violent and a lot of people got hurt and he was there standing against them 
but they... they overwhelmed him. I tried to help, but I... I couldn't... I couldn't... I couldn't do anything. I didn't know how to help. I didn't know how to do anything. I wasn't as good as a wizard, and... and I was afraid. And... I watched him get killed. And I feel like he might have felt really alone and afraid in that moment. And I always felt like maybe, maybe there was something I could have done. And I just didn't have the courage to do it. So who's next? Uh, my, my mentor was extremely important to me. Trist in the shadow taught me how to become one with the darkness. But most of all, he taught me to seek justice out for those who were too weak or too small to seek it for themselves. But that was before he betrayed me. His grand scheme of overtaking the town and using it for his own enjoyment. I revealed it. And I had no choice. Only one of us was going to come off that roof. And it was me. It was easy to trip him. I learned a few tricks on my own without his help. I had to use those against him. Sometimes, when I'm alone doing my patrols, I can hear him in the wind telling me where things are. Incorrect, or justice isn't being served. And then he puts his cape over his face again. It's not my turn anymore. I, I guess it's my turn. I come from very far away. And that's purposeful. I have doubts you've heard of me. That is why I'm at this part portion of the world. But in other portions of the world, I'm very well known. And not for my musical talent. I come from nobility. I am the first daughter of my mother, Ariel, and my father, Henrod. My father is the king of a nation, and he declared himself as the head of our church as well. My mother bore me as their first child, and she was scorned for having a daughter. So much so that factions that were against her branded her a witch and cursed and accused her of all sorts of horrible things but my mother always loved me my father though he brought in another woman and decided that she would bear him a son they both used the people to turn against my mother and everyone at the end of her days hated her, and at my father's word, she was beheaded, and her own sister took her place. I left, and now I'm traveling the world as a bard. And then we all look to Lorelei and her brother, Expectedly. Uh, Lorelai is just gonna... You really think that spilling our guts is gonna do anything to stop these fucking ghosts? And she's gonna sort of turn around in a huff, shoulders crossed. She thinks this is dumb. And Luvan <laughs> has taken a seat at this point because we've sort... You're taking a, a, a little break. Uh, well, I'll, I'll go, I guess. I mean, there's not really much to say. Uh, I was working on a farm... Men. I loved, I loved bunnies. They're my favorite. Mom and dad would keep so many bunnies for me and my sister. But I don't, I it was just sometimes they just did, they had to go to sleep, you know? They were just so sleepy, those bunnies. Laura and I would get so mad because she liked the bunnies too. And we would get in this huge fight about it all the time because we'd always be going through all these bunnies. And I just got so mad one day. I just hit her over the head with a shovel. And 
Then it wasn't just the bunnies that went to sleep then. Lorelai went to sleep too. Incog looks at Lorelai. Lorelai. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute. Are you telling me your sister is uh, dead? Well, I told you the first sign was hearing and seeing things and well, I'm pretty far along myself, so... Lori? And Lorelai is going to slowly turn around and as she does, you're going to see this gaping smash into her face of where it looks as though a shovel had been smashed into pretty recently and she is going to let out a scream Lori? Uh, <laughs> let's go <laughs> <laughs> and I assume you guys are probably going to run uh, Luvon is going to try to like go up and talk to her his sister. All right, grab Luvon. Grab Luvon. All grab right. Luvon. Grab, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Grab and Luvon. Yeah. Running, running as fast GTFO. as I can. GTFO. Wait, wait, Lori. You just hear Incog just like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. <laughs> and as you're running through this cavern now, freaking full speed ahead, you're just going to hear this scream echoing behind you. Uh, she's not chasing you. She is just pissed um, that she has been found out pretty much. Well, now, uh, now I know why she's kind of cranky all the time. <laughs> yeah, she got a shovel to the face. Never let me live it down. Never let me live uh, it down. Well, yeah, that may, that's one story maybe you should have kept to yourself, to be quite honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I think I'm glad he told us because we would have continued traveling with that. <laughs> uh, yeah, true, yeah, very true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> I'm gonna run out of breath really soon, guys. Uh, this 12 year old body doesn't have the lung capacity I had before. <laughs> nope, just keep going. <laughs> keep uh, pushing. <laughs> uh, well, running and running and running, you have probably spent a long portion of the day just getting away from where you were, past these bridges, further and further into the cavern. And at this point, in the distance of the cavern, you're starting to see sort of the end point. Doesn't really look like it's going to go on that much farther. If you look up ahead of you, it's as though the cavern is sloping down. And as you get closer... Like further further into the earth? More like the ceiling is coming down, closing you off. I see. And We're like, got it. Yeah, you're coming basically to an op- what looks like an opening but it unfortunately isn't actually an opening at all. It's more as if it's a pocket of life within the cave walls. It is filled with greenery and lush flora and fauna, a running waterfall almost dripping from the orifices, the orifices, almost dripping from the orifice of Ooh, this dripping orifices. bubble. <laughs> we are writing that fanfic yeah, right now. Yeah, put that, yes. put that yes. in the, the chat GPT prompt. Put that right now. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot about that one. Orifices. Yep. And dripping. You forgot dripping, too. Uh, <laughs> uh, streaming out of this pocket of life through the cavern walls. Uh there's ornate designs of mushrooms and uh, leaves almost pressed into the mountainside as well. And coming up to this pocket of life, you're going to see a large tree, some shrubs, and in the center is a glimmering, shimmering pool of liquid with a single lotus floating above its surface. So it's peaceful. Yes, it's very peaceful. But you don't seem to see any living beings, like no birds or bugs. It just seems to be more plant life. Mm. Is any, any of that, any of that uh, bioluminescent fungus in here as well? Not in here, no. And there's just one single lotus. If we've got a moment to breathe, if we feel like we've escaped this scream and we've come into this peaceful place, I'm going to pull out the map and kind of try and figure out where we are. Sure, the map that you were given by the paladins goes as far as the bridge. Unfortunately, that's the furthest. Oh, oh yeah, they that's never That's the get, furthest anyone's made it. They never been down here. Yeah. We're off the map, everyone. 
this is uncharted territory, which is exciting. But let's keep our guard up. And there's no, I guess I, I'll look around for any other visible exits out of this room, Jamie. No, it's almost as, like I said, it's like a bubble pocket inside this mountainside. Can I scan the room looking for anything out of the ordinary that's not, I guess, nature-ish, nature-ish or cavernous? Well, if you want to roll, um, if you want to all roll an arcana check for me, um, it's not going to be a very hard check. Oh because my no, I want to roll Arcana. <laughs> I've been rolling so great. <laughs> Minus oh. one for me. Oh. <sighs> Eight Gee. for Here me. Here we go. Here we go. Arcana minus one is an eleven total. That's a. Ooh. I would still say you all feel, and maybe just at different pulls, that as soon as you enter this oasis, this is heavy with magic. Like you are feeling it almost emanating off of the leaves itself. It is very potent, the magical energy coming from this place. You may not be able to particularly know what type of magic it is, but it's a lot. <laughs> I might be able to find out what kind of magic it is if if that's allowed, Jamie. I have a, I have the spell identify, and if I if I can cast it, it takes a, it takes about eleven minutes to cast. Like I need to do a ritual again, but could I do that to determine? what kind of specific magic it is. I'd say you could do that. And I would say while you're doing that, if anybody has anything that they want to do while Shinies is performing this ritual in this pocket, you're more than welcome to. I think um, Incog wants to touch the water. He'll go touch the water. Just run his hand through it. I'm going to do like a scan of this area to see if there's like any features or anything that sticks out. Like, like in my mind, the Lotus, but anything else that seems like okay that's odd <laughs> mm -hmm. do you want to do a perception roll yeah Ooh, dirty 20 Ooh, nice um things that look odd i mean besides the fact that there's like an oasis of life seemingly coming from nowhere yeah uh, that's a little odd you know and the lotus itself because I had said that it was floating above the water. It's not actually touching the water, so that's a oh. bit odd. Oh. Oh. Yeah. So that's a little odd, but the greenery and like flora and fauna you're seeing itself are the same things that you would see above world. They are just lush here. They are thriving in this cave. And Alex, you said you wanted to touch the water. Um, yes. So as you're going up to the water, uh, I'll say that you notice that it is definitely shimmering. And not just the way water would when a light hits it, it's shimmering almost with a golden hue. And it's reflecting things around it, but something about it is off. Maybe it's a touch behind in timing wise, maybe it's the shade of color is off, but something about the reflection here is weird. Yeah, he looks at that and he does that whole like, Move your hand over it to see the timing. Makes a funny face uh, to see it. And then tries to touch his reflection in the water to see if like, oh, is it going to touch back? What? <laughs> is it uh, going to touch back? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, as the water's rippling, it's not going to touch you back. <laughs> but you are going to see almost like through blinds or shades that there is something on the other side of this water. It's reflecting your world, but it's also reflecting something from the other side. Hmm. I'm not gonna stick my face in it. I'm already 12 years old. Luvon is already in the- <laughs> No! <laughs> no. <laughs> He's butt deep, no. And it's also going to as you're sort of trinkling your arms across the water, it's going to give off a little ring. Like, ding. Hey, everybody. The water, there's, there's, there's something funny about it. Oh? It's like there's something behind it, but I can't quite see it. Oh, well, don't touch it. I, I've been touching it since the minute we got in here, so I, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you. Oh, oh, okay. And you're I mean, fine? I, yeah. You look I'm, fine. Yeah, nothing. I mean, I'm still 12, but yeah, nothing else. Um, should I drink it or like? I wouldn't advise to do that. Okay. Yeah, you got it. I mean, Tara. Yes. I, I <laughs> and 
that flower there, it is floating above the water. It's not on the water. Perhaps, Whoa. if not the source, it has some connection to what is happening here. Well, levitation magic isn't isn't that uncommon. Let me see if I can figure out or try and pinpoint the arcane energy around here. I'll need a little bit of time. Jamie, is it okay? Is there like maybe like one of those, uh, maybe like a lotus petal or maybe a leaf on the on the water that I can pick up and and try and do this identify ritual about? If you would like to try to go up and touch the flower and pull off a leaf or oh. a petal, I welcome you to it. I was thinking just like something floating on the surface of the water. Just the I lotus, I wouldn't say I there's anything else on the water yet. It's just the lotus. I know that the picture makes it look like there's a bunch of stuff, but there's just the one lotus. If you wanted to sort of focus by like touching the water, you could do that. Oh, okay. I I will do that. Yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, scoop... I'll stand guard with you. I'll make sure. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll scoop up some water, um, like in in a cup or something like that. Just something to to okay. hold the water in and like sit down and and do this ritual. Do the throat singing again, mm -hmm. uh, softly. Side of car and... throat singing. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh almost. <laughs> Because I we're love that. So yeah, I, I I do this ritual. I'll say as you're doing your chanting, the water that you've cupped is starting to trickle down your arms, and it begins to glow, a bright golden hue, and you are going to learn that this water and this lotus come from Thay magic, and this is what is known as the Life Lotus. It cures any ailment any blight, any curse, but an old legend does tell you that you shouldn't fucking touch it. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know why, <laughs> but okay, okay. the legend says, says that it is dangerous to touch. Oh, got it. Okay, so I guess how that manifests is that water begins to flow and ripple and like uh, it does that thing as he's humming with his throat that like, you know, when you run water through s the speakers and they make those like patterns, you know, uh, the, those ripple patterns, that's what's happening as it's glowing in his cup. And like in it, there is sort of like this arcane, uh, like he senses the arcane healing properties of this thing. But also there's sort of like a vision, like a flash of like danger, do not touch. And... Uh, that's what breaks him out of the the spell, and and he like comes back to him and looks up at looks up at Encog and Terra and that flower in, in this water. It's there's a healing property here, a curing property. But I get the sense that we shouldn't touch it. Maybe it's maybe its magic is not uh, uh, meant to be to be used. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> uh, and like he, you can see the water still trickling from his gauntleted hands from earlier when he was just messing around with it. I think you're okay. I think you're okay. It's 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 more just the flower. That that flower. Incog. We'll accept the water again. When you say he healing properties, what do you, what do you mean? Like uh, like ouchies or like this? And he points to himself. Jamie, do I get the sense that I know we flavored this like random spell of Encog becoming twelve as like part of the the things that are happening. Yeah. Um, that I know that we, that was kind of flavored, but do I get a sense that like this is because of this water, or uh, or that it, it is of the source of this water? Like, will this source fix that, or is it because of this source? I, I see what you're asking. You're asking if this pocket of life is causing the blight or if this is the cure for the blight. Yes, exactly. And I'm happy to roll if I need to roll for that. Well, I think you know what the life lotus is and its properties. If you want to do like a history roll to figure out like what that danger could be and like what the legend perhaps goes into more detail about, I think that could get you the info you are looking for. 
I would love to. I'm going to rack my brain uh, to see if I've read anything about a flower that cures stuff but is also dangerous. Here we These low rolls. That's a seven. Arcane and history. Those are like my jams. And I, <laughs> I fucking know. rolled Plus four. so low. Okay, it happens. Plus four. So yeah, ouchies. Something definitely is is a healing property about this lotus, though. Like it has performed miracles. I I, I relay this to Encog. I'm I'm not sure if it's the cause or the cure for your changes. He looks at it for a second, then to Shinies and Tatara, and his eyes dart back and forth from the group to the water. Uh, only one way to find out. And then he jumps in. Hello, listeners. Thank you for joining me in the mid-roll. Just wanted to drop an update about our scheduling. This is our penultimate episode of Ghosts of Greyhill. In two weeks from this release, we'll have our final episode, which will conclude our story with the Kings of 69. And following that, we'll have a wrap-up episode where we talk about our thoughts on the campaign, the characters, and do a little Q&A. And if you have any questions for any of us, please feel free to send them to respectthecrit at gmail.com. Or, you know, you can chuck them at us on social media at respectthecrit. And you can even post them in our official Discord. After that, we'll be picking up right where we left off with our Star Wars campaign, Empire's Edge. Recently, I've talked a lot about transgender rights and the fascist agenda to dissolve those rights and erase LGBTQIA people and experiences from public spaces in the U.S. With this ongoing attempt at genocide by Republican lawmakers, we as a community need to protect and build mutual aid for our neighbors and citizens that are the most threatened and affected. And here's a great way that we can do that. A Place for Marsha.org is an organization that facilitates help for trans adults fleeing from unsafe states to safer ones. By going to a Place for Marsha.org, you can sign up and volunteer to help host, rent a room, or help transport trans folks who may not otherwise have the means to flee harmful legislation targeting trans or gender nonconforming people. It's really easy to apply. You just download an application and email it. You can apply to host, to drive people, to rent space, or all of the above, and they vet and background check for everybody's safety and try to create ideal matches based on your application. If you live in a state that has protections for trans people and their families or is comparatively safer for trans folks, I encourage you to consider applying. And even if you live in a state where this harmful legislation is enforced, consider applying anyway to see how you can help. They also accept donations if you are able, which you can find on the website. LGBTQIA+, cisgender, transgender, or ally, this is how we build mutual aid for each other across communities and across distances. Visit aplaceformarsha.org. The link will be provided in the description of this episode, as well as on our official Discord. Thanks for listening, and now, let's get back to the episode. Splash. Oh, yes, uh, well, let's go! <laughs> Luvon, oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh god, okay. How are, how are Tara and Shining gonna react to this? I mean, I feel like he's sitting there like he's just done this ritual so he's just kind of like sitting there so he just can't uh, he probably like stands up but he probably doesn't do too much to like physically stop him so tara was probably looking towards the lotus at this moment because he would because uh shinies was just saying that i don't know if it's the cause or the curse or if it's the curse or it's the cure so she's looking at it and all of a sudden splash so she'll look to like her left and look to where incognite just jumped in and then shiny has very clearly said we shouldn't touch the flower at least (laughs) (laughs) so before even incog could get to it i'm going to use mage hand and just push the flower towards us, but not touch it myself. Whoa. Just so Incog can't touch it. <laughs> okay, so you're using Mage Hand to sort of 
not touch the flower, but move it towards you, still floating above the water. Uh, NCOG in the water. <laughs> Shinies <Yeah. laughs> having a what the fuck moment. <laughs> yeah. um, Probably Luvon say his is, name. Yeah. <laughs> like, NCOG. Luvon is going to uh, peer over the water and just sort of start poking it. It ringing each time it is touched. So when oh. NCOG jumped in, it was a very loud bell-like sound that you oh, heard cool. echoing through. Yeah. Um, and uh, after a while, this lotus has been moved. NCOG has been underwater for a bit. Oh, and I mean, I'll, I'll come back to up. come out for oh, air. Oh, am I allowed to, or am I just? Is this something I can't do because something it's else something happening? Something you cannot do. Currently. Oh, I'm dead. I'm drowning. Luvon <laughs> is gonna say. Where'd he go? Oh, dear. Okay, uh. so he's like, <laughs> I'm looking at Tara, and yeah, we're like waiting for him to like come back up. Um, okay. Uh, I don't think he's coming back up. I think we gotta go get him. I think we have to get him, but if we jump in, we probably won't be able to come back up either. Well, maybe there's a way through that we just don't perceive at the moment. Tara, Luvon, take my hands. Are we jumping in? Is that what's happening? Because I don't, I don't like that. Part. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I would have just put my head underneath. <laughs> uh, I jump in. <laughs> the bell tower is ringing with each of these splashes and jumping through this pool, you're going to feel that golden arcana energy all around you like it is pure freaking magic um for <laughs> the people at home uh from our last session susan uh you rolled and this was your roll <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh right magical portal check what? okay <laughs> Oh, uh, this campaign might be a little longer than I anticipated, <laughs> but yeah, it'll be yeah, fine. Yeah. We're going to figure it Yay. out together. <laughs> gonna figure it I out. did it. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Gray Hill. Uh, um, we should just grab the flower and I'm gone, guys. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I want to become a grown up again. Cured any blight, any curse. I, I gave it to you right there. <laughs> <laughs> like, we didn't even have to touch it. I have mage hand. Like... <laughs> <laughs> we'll just take it on the way out. Uh, well, jumping through this pool and being surrounded by this warm golden light, you are eventually going to reach the surface. And it's no longer a pocket or a bubble of life inside this mountain. It is a huge, vast forest of wildlife and greenery. And you can hear birds chirping. And you have been transported. The only thing that is of any resemblance to you are these glowing orbs in the air. And just to be clear, did Tara jump in or is Tara still on the other side? I think you grabbed her hand so she didn't jump but she was dragged. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> and NCOG, you would have been the first to see this new world. What would your <laughs> first action be i suppose so like when i come out of the water am i like struggling to get out or is it just like swimming to the edge of the yeah it's just a regular pool of water okay swim to the edge as i look around at this place that seems to be filled with wilderness birds and and these chirping orbs are they chirping or are they just floating around it's the same chirping that you had heard in the cave oh, yeah oh shit my weapon is out i have my weapon out and i'm looking up with my shield and I give the old war the what am I yeah, my my morning star one quick twirl and I realize it just they're not attacking, they're just hovering above doing what they normally do, I guess. They're kind of just floating above you. It looks as though um, they're zipping across, almost like there's traffic patterns that they seem to be following, but they are chirping in the same sort of creepy way you heard in the cave. Well, I'm gonna be very confused with my eight intelligence and think that, oh, I made it. It's a, it's an escape route. I made it outside. And then I'm going to look at the wilderness and the sky. Is it like the same? Is it recognizable or is it completely 
off kilter, like purple sky or some shit. It's not off kilter, but much like the reflection, everything feels a little off. Mm. Everything is a shade different than it normally would be. Um, the blue sky is maybe more of a turquoise. You know, it's not too weird, but it is weird. Yeah. The plants mimic the ones that you would see on the mainland, you know, but they also have little quirks to them. Oh, okay. someone's messed with the HSV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the different color scheme. Man, they really hit the uh, bloom. They hit the bloom filter really hard on this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Incog looks around, sees that everything's a little different, and realizes, no, I'm not outside. I'm outside somewhere else. Um, keeps the shield out, puts the weapon away. Looks at his body. Is he st- Am I still 12 years old? You are still 12 years old. Ah, this was a waste of uh, my life. <sighs> uh, he... Walks back slowly, like, all right, let me try to go backwards, I guess. And he'll turn around and look at the water and then, ah, bogus. And then he just, bloop, goes, tries to go back underwater, tries to go back. As he's wading in, you just, we're just like, <laughs> like, break the surface, yeah. like, <laughs> and cog, and cog. <laughs> You're going to end up kicking shinies in the face. <laughs> oh, what, uh, what's that? Boom. Oh, my snoot. Why did you guys come here? You weren't coming back. We thought you were in trouble. No, no, it just it's, it's like a portal to this weird place, and there's no lotus here and uh, more of those chirpers, so I'm just going to go back. Oh, and I and looks up and like, you said this was fey magic, right? Yes. He's like, oh, are these fey lights? This place may be touching the fey, the fey wild. I don't know what that means. It's like our world, but uh, a mirror world, but um, for the residents of the Feywild, fairies and elves, it's where their magic comes from. Oh, he didn't. He, yeah, Incognito did not know this, so he'll like, I assume he's, we're still kind of floating, half floating, half like jumping off the ground a little bit from the, the shallow end of this pond, and he'll turn around looking at the, the Feywild or whatever this pocket dimension is, and it's connected to elves, you said? Um, yes. Uh, well, m- m- many elves. It's it's said that's where their ancestry comes from. Uh, perhaps even these are what the ancient elves that created or the cistern in, in the hills. Maybe, maybe they're residents of the Fae. Huh. So it's like going to the motherland, I guess. Yeah, us. Uh, Something like that. Do you feel any, any deep connection? <laughs> Incognito probably doesn't feel anything like that because he's like <laughs> a devout paladin. <laughs> his magic, his magic doesn't come from himself. It comes from his beliefs and what he's been endowed from uh, the goddess. So he'll he'll take a second to like think about it, and then turns head. No, I don't. I don't really feel anything besides I'm a little hungry. I'm kind of tired. Well, if this is a portal, do you want to see if we can if we can take it back or if this is a one way trip? Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> that's probably something I should have thought about before I jumped in, huh? And he'll look at Tara when he says this. Tara's just nodding your head with her eyes closed <laughs> as soon as you say that. <laughs> if we thought that's not really my specialty, it never was even as a kid. So as an adult, it got even worse. And Lu- uh, what's his name was with us, right? Uh, Luvon. 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 Yes, yeah. Luvon did jump through with you. Uh, and he's just sort of looking around like, oh, whoa, this is crazy, man. I feel like we're uh, really exposing Luvon to the miracles and wonders of the world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and with Shiny is bringing up that this may be part or adjacent to the Feywild, does anybody else want to roll a history or I'll even take an arcana I yes. will forego for where you check. could possibly be? I got a 15 with history. Dirty 20 arcana. Ooh, Ooh yes. Nice job. Uh, so you're going to know that this is definitely connected to the Feywild. It may not be uh, the actual place, but it does feel adjacent. Uh, and with the history check, you're going to know 
uh, that that pool of water, the golden glowing, was a portal, a, unfortunately, one-way portal into <laughs> this pocket of Fey Realm. I now realize, having taken a moment, looking at both shinies and Incog, just like looking at them, giving them that look. Like We're the, like just dri dripping wet, like yeah. treading water in yeah. this pool. <laughs> the golden glow meant it was a portal. Unfortunately for all of us, I also now realize it's a one-way portal. Giving you both that look. Ankok <laughs> like, just goes, sucks air through his teeth. Well, I mean, really, you shouldn't have followed me. I don't think that that was a smart move. Uh, you should just left me here, to be honest. Uh, Heroes leave no one behind. And he'll like, nod. True, true. But, you know, I'm just trying to find a way to put the blame not on me. This frail 12 year old mind really doesn't like admitting when he's at fault but I know I'm at fault but I'm not gonna do it I appreciate your introspection and realizing even though without admitting you are at fault but also um, heroes also like to assess the situation and maybe take a moment to realize dangers so in the future going forward I am not blaming you but going forward, perhaps we will assess before jumping into a pool of water. I'll take the note. Uh, if, it, if it's any consolation, on the upside, it seems like where we're at at the moment is a place where the Feywild is bleeding into our own world. Uh, perhaps a rift where the edges are overlapping. Is it safe? Oh, far from it. No, 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 no. This is not safe. No, 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 oh, no, okay, no. Good, good. Because, you know, I was starting to get a little, not to say it hasn't been a challenging road so far, but I thought, uh, you know, I could use a little bit more danger, life altering events. Maybe I can become four years old next time. Who knows? And then he starts swimming out of the pond, but like talking to himself very sarcastically. And like the, the, te the teenage sarcasm begins to take him over, you know. <laughs> It's not like I overexert myself and have no spells left for the rest of the day. It's not like, you know, I can't heal anybody or, you know, my arms aren't tired. My feet don't hurt. You know, I'm not in, for some reason in a really bad mood. What is going on? And he's like just talking to himself as he's, <laughs> sw as he's swimming out of the pond. He needs to sleep. Well, what is everybody's passive perception? Ooh, 12. Mine's 12 as well. 15 for me. Ooh, okay. Okay. Uh, well, as you're getting out of this pool of water, all of you are going to notice that some of these glowing spheres above you have definitely noticed you and have started to float down towards you. I would say as Encog gets out of the pond and he sees this, he, see, he notices that they, they're, they're, they're breaking off their traffic pattern that he saw earlier and they're coming down. He will point up to the orbs and shout back to the group, hey, we should move. Yeah, we we get out and uh, try not to uh, mess with these orbs. I can't fight them, I don't have any, like I mentioned, I have nothing left. Like I have no no magics left, no magics. We gotta find it, we gotta figure out where we are. Maybe there's a, a point here where we can orient ourselves. Well, right now you seem to be surrounded by forest. All right, this we're in a forest. Is... Yeah. That much I know. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Good job. Um, maybe tree cover. I don't want to be in. I don't want to be in the front anymore. So I'm gonna like. He, he Incog kind of slinked back and waits for the group to get out of the pond and move, and then he'll start. He'll follow their movements because he doesn't want to be. He doesn't get in trouble. He thinks he'll get in trouble if he leads them into another. <laughs> Mom got Fair. stern. Mom gave me a talking to. I don't want to. I don't want to get in trouble again. We're trying to get away from the orbs, I guess. That's the first thing just that we do. Just running into the forest. <laughs> exactly. Blindly into the forest. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just running into the forest. Um, well, you are faster than them. They seem to be sort of literally floating through the air, not necessarily flying. Uh, and you will definitely get under some tree cover, but they are all over the sky. So you're oh. going to have to okay. be, <laughs> you're going to have to either be sneaky 
as you're going through like open valleys and things because they are like i said before there's almost liken it to like ocean currents it seems as though there's currents in the sky that these orbs are following so you can avoid those if if you're if you're doing that but i don't know that you necessarily have a destination in mind you're kind of just walking no. through the wood maybe if there's like a mountain or a plateau some sort of high ground that we can see through the tree line yeah i pu- I, I would like to pull out the the map books uh, as well and see if i can like orient if we are even on this plane uh, the same plane of existence as as gray hill well it's interesting because you're looking around for landmarks and it doesn't really seem like there are any mountain ranges nearby it's almost as if you're on a flat plateau of forest oh shit this is definitely fey magic how can there be no mountains this makes no sense Nothing to climb on besides trees. I can't get on top of a building and, and scowl down below and, and sit next to gargoyles. I don't understand. This doesn't make any sense. So as we're rushing along, Tara's just all of a sudden just going to, like, okay, and stop. E- even if you pass her or or probably incognito, like, runs into her behind because, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. I mean, Tara. Sorry. It's fine. We clearly don't know where we are and we don't know where to go perhaps and she looks up towards the tree cover and just sees the orbs floating through the leaves like like she sees it up like above the trees um they don't seem to be following us from behind and it seems that they are going in their own direction above we have not slept in over a day, and I'm not saying a full night, but at least a moment to assess the situation would be necessary. I, I, I agree 100%, and I volunteer myself as the first one to go to sleep. Yeah, Incog's getting cranky. He'll not. I guess this body, it, it's very strange. I don't know how my... Uh, my guardians at the orphanage put up with me when I was this age because uh, this feels awful and I know I'm being 100% awful. Plus, I only need to rest for like four hours. I don't really sleep. I kind of just close my eyes and make these weird noises with my mouth. And then I wake up four hours later. Yes, you should sleep. We all should sleep. I will take first watch. And then it's weird. So Tara isn't a mom. But I guess she has some motherly instincts because she's going to be helping you, like, bed down and, like... Me <laughs> <laughs> <Me> and mama. <laughs> he has, uh, he, you see him, like, think his bedroll. He just puts it next to, like, this rock. And he's, like, setting up the the rock. Is like, this is to, for the side. Protect me from this angle. And, like, you see him Yeah, and then she's going to, like, shit. help you out of this, like, uh, your, like, over, like, your robe. Just, like, help you out and put that down. Roll it up for you perfectly as a pillow. And just, like, uh, like unconsciously <laughs> doing this, too. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. He's like, oh, thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> Tara, I think it would help ease all of our minds with, uh with a little lullaby, maybe put us asleep. And he's under his blanket, uh, in under the blanket, like nodding very rapidly, like, yes. If you know any, any good ones, and ones you can sing quietly. Oh, uh, I was gonna go to ch- chat GPT, but it's not working. <laughs> 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 it's not up right now. I was gonna, I like, I was typing D and D. Fantasy lullaby. Lullabies. Yeah. You know, actually I have, I know of a spell that could perhaps help us. And then she's going to take out her bagpipes. No, actually, fitting the Tra- scene. A, a, a traditionally quiet instrument. Yeah, she's actually going to take out a, her flute because she Ooh. has one. <laughs> um, Multi-talented. It, I have a lot of instruments, by the way. I don't know how I'm carrying all these. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, she's gonna take out her flute because I feel like it's fitting toward this scene, like this forest, and, and she's just gonna quietly play. And I know you could quietly play flute because I used to play flute, and uh, just start playing a tune. And it's actually gonna be song of rest. I don't know if this is gonna be a full night's rest, but at the very least, if it's a short rest, we could get double hit die back. And it's just going to be a soft, lilting tune that complements the chirping we hear above from Ooh. the orbs. And then it just like has that flowy feeling 
like like you hear the wind rustle and that compliments it too like she's complimenting the environment and as our adventurers lull to sleep we pan out to these glowing orbs like fireflies in the sky and this beautiful dragonborn lullaby For listening to this week's episode of Respect the Crits, Ghosts of Greyhill. If you like what you heard, please consider supporting us by leaving a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts or whatever platform you use to listen. It's easy, free, and helps others hear about the show. For more information about the show, visit at Respect the Crit on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, or come join the community in our official Discord. Incognito is played by Alex Herrera, who you can find on Twitter at AE Herrera or on his Twitch channel, Wade Wolf 10. Pterodactyl is played by Susan Spinator, who you can find on Instagram at Suze Lelouz. Chinese Charizard is played by me, Ian Duncan, and you can find me at iDunks on Twitter and Instagram. Our dungeon master is Jamie Lee Bonez, and you can find her on Instagram and TikTok at Jamie MF Bones. The music in this episode is provided with license or permission by a variety of talented artists whose info and credits can be found in the episode notes. Please support them by visiting their platforms to hear more of their work. Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition is published by Wizards of the Coast. And remember, whatever the system, whether it's a miss or a hit, you always gotta respect the crit. Thank you for listening, and may you heal that which haunts you. Chat GPT, can you uh, please write me some Bad Batch fan fiction, extra horny, please? It would. It would 100% <laughs> do it. That's the scary thing. And it would know, tags, it would know right tags, away. Tags uh, Wrecker, please. Wrecker <laughs> and your original character. <laughs> Wrecker and my OC. Use yeah. the prompts below. Yes. <laughs> Be sure to use the words... Uh, I, I, and then I could, yeah. Moist, Moist muscles, sweat, girthy. <laughs> muscles, sweat, girthy, bulging, Ugh. bulging, throbbing, <laughs> throbbing, uh, glistening, Viscous, glistening, glistening. <laughs> vitality, <laughs> vitality, <laughs> <laughs> oh, stamina, uh, stamina, stamina, aftercare, afterglow, After hugging, care, yeah. <laughs> kissing. <laughs> Chachi just blows up. Uh, He's like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs>